normally I'd be more um, upbeat and excited about speaking with a, an Olympian, but I think today's topic is a bit more um, serious. Of course, your Ukrainian Stanislav Aruna, Olympic bronze medalist in karate, and you are currently fighting the Russians, which shouldn't happen. Um, news broke off that you are auctioning off your Olympic medal to help the cause. So um, I guess first things first, man, tell me a little bit about the thought process behind that. It sounds like an easy uh, decision to me, but I don't have an Olympic medal either. But how do you feel about it? Uh, different thoughts, different emotions. Well, it's a bit sad, of course, to to realize that you will not have this medal anymore, as it is a unique one, very rare event in in life of any athlete. It's a medal of dream, and usually this medal is such unique and so, so valuable for those who have it, who possess it that you realize that this is the medal that you can give to your son, to your uh, next generation. So this is like a family relic. And this is a symbol of that some of your, some, some person of you in your family that he could achieve like top. He could achieve, achieve to the top, yeah, of in, right. his, in what he did. So this is like, you know, inspiring thing that that is nice to have just in your life because this, it's not like, you know, medal from the European Championship or World Championship or, or any other competition. This is something special. Yeah. And this status of Olympian stays with you to the rest of your life. But on the other hand, it's just a piece of metal. And uh, even to get it is, you, if you are not an athlete, you cannot imagine how, how difficult it is to get this medal. Um, how many competitions, tournaments, preparations, injuries, conflicts, uh, you, you have to pass through to, to get there and, and then win this medal. Um, but it's, the time we have now is, is critical. And it's a question of priorities. And of course, my country has more pro bigger priority than my medal. And uh, as our economy is paralyzed and people, Ukrainian people and uh, need to provide financial flows uh, to the national budget to support our army and to support people, medicine and everything necessary. So that's what we trying to do in these hard times. Luckily, we have big, huge international support. People from all over the world are on our side, and we we are uh, we are all together, and we succeed in raising money. And that's how we still keep fighting. If we didn't have and support from people from other countries. I guess we wouldn't be able to stand against Russia's Russians. Yeah, and that's that's one thing I wanted to get at. The international support has been, at least from what I'm seeing, I don't know what y'all are seeing on the inside, but the international support you're seeing has to be not only incredibly helpful, but uh, uplifting to the people fighting, the citizens, uh, the people in charge. It has to be just you know, this is great. This, this really helps us a lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like the whole world united against one common evil, one common enemy, you know, because the whole civilized world, like see the truth, what's going on. They understand this is uh, unreasonable. There is no sense in doing this. Like even, even if Russia succeeds, uh, succeeded in uh, conquering Ukraine, what will they do with this territory? They destroy everything. They like they kill and they destroy totally. Like it's burnt land after them. Why do they need it? 
for what? Like there is no sense in, in what they do. They just kill, they just rape, destroy and and murder. Uh, and everyone understand this. That's why we have support with the weapons, with the medicine, with money, with humanitarian help, with everything we need. Like even people, they don't even, um, they don't just support us uh, financially or with words, yeah, but they come here and they fight for us. Many Americans, Europeans, Japanese people, like from the whole world, they come. Who can fight, they fight. Who can uh, be useful uh, in medicine, they serve here, but they all help us. And that's incredible how, what's going on right now. Like not our, only our nation is uh, united as never before, but the whole world is with us and the whole world is united with one thought and what, with one idea. And this is amazing to spectate, to watch. And I guess this war is um, and will be, uh, will be, you know, world changing in, in the meaning of uh, international security, defense and collaboration. Like it, like after the Second World War, like all the protocols and international agreements, memorandums were signed to, like, to keep the stability in the world peace. And now they will be updated, and more. I I, I hope they will be more uh, successful and effective, so this will never happen again. And you touched on something you at the beginning. You talked about how Russia is destroying everything. And like, what, what's the point in taking a land that has nothing destroyed? And they would probably argue that, well, why do you want to keep it then? But it's not about just the land to, to Ukrainians. I feel like it would be more about the ability to be a Ukrainian. You're not Russian. You're Ukrainian. You know, if you want to be yes. Russian. Now the whole world Russian. will know the difference, you know, between yeah. Ukraine and Russia. As yeah. before, like, we, we were the same. Yeah. The people. But um, so Russia's whole reason they are saying is is because of Nazis. They say there's Nazis all in <laughs> Ukraine. <laughs> exactly, it's laughable. The whole world laughed when they said, "Like, really, we're going with that." How just how ridiculous of a statement is that? It's one hundred percent ridiculous, and uh, this just absurd, uh, absurd. And like you know, you it's like Nazis in Ukraine, ban- banderas in Ukraine. I don't know who else. These um just like Marvel's heroes, you know, they are not real. Right. They are they are imaginary. Uh, but the but Russian people they were told for years about Nazis in Ukraine. And they didn't they didn't care what what's going on here because uh it doesn't influence their lives. So they didn't check this information. They just um, keep it for granted. And and now when the conflict is open now, uh, they believe this is true. Yeah. And they, they, and they are like, informationally, they are isolated from the rest of the world. Sadly. Uh, sadly, yes. And they cannot compare the information. They just have one source of information. That's all. And they're, so they are actually blind. And they yeah. are stupid. Actually, they are really stupid yeah. because just few cities in the huge uh, Russia, Russian Federation, are developed and successful. But most of the regions, like 90% of the regions, are really poor without uh, proper infrastructure, without technologies, uh, without nothing. They don't have nothing. There's poor regions and of course, it's easy to control them. It's easy to persuade them in what is right and what is wrong. Right. If, if president tells them there are Nazis in Ukraine, they believe. Like the the first information they accept, they they continue to believe in this, and they cannot change their minds. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what we tell to them, uh, nothing can be changed. And as as we see from the interviews with Russian people, they they just want 
our death, they think they're, they're confident about that Ukraine must be conquered. But if you ask them for the reason and for the goal, for what was the point of it, they will not tell you because they don't know. They just think it is needed to be so. They have no explanations in their minds of what's going on and for what, what's the reason for this. And, you know, if killing people was unacceptable thing, like months ago, now it's, uh, now it's uh, like the subject for pride. Here. Right. That's very strange what's going on and how the values, values, human values are changed now. Yeah. So where are you right now? Where, uh, what city are you at or near? I'm in Lviv. I'm in Lviv. Now I'm staying in my home. As yesterday, I was uh, I was patrolling the whole day and the whole night. So now I'm at home trying to recover, and tomorrow I will continue patrolling. What are you seeing there from the war? How how bad is its tentacles reaching into your city, your home, and your life? I, uh, my city is located on the west of Ukraine, and mm-hmm. it's relatively safe here. As what I can see from here is, of course, news and uh, uh, refugees from other cities. They come here. Uh, I talk with them. I talk with soldiers, with military guys, uh, volunteers from other cities, international volunteers. And that's my source of information. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, I'm, I'm sad. I'm angry. I'm sometimes mad about what I hear and what I see and but I can't do nothing. Uh, the only thing I can it's like that I volunteer, I do some informational campaign using my Instagram account. Uh, and uh, I'm giving interviews to international uh, media to tell them what's going on here. Uh, You're doing a lot. I, I, I don't know how much I do, but I'm trying to do what I can. And so here I also help people with humanitarian help. And like, I'm trying to be useful. Uh, And of course, if uh, like Russian army together with Belarusian, Belarus, Belarus, Belarusian army comes here to my city on the west of Ukraine, uh, I will be forced to fight here. And of course, I will be forced to kill. The invaders you're doing what you have to man um yeah you know, people yeah. think that they would be in the same situation they would do the same thing i'd like to think the same of myself um so western media is really a lot talked about i'm i'm more of the martial arts scene a lot of talks been around uh fighters like you uh klitschko brothers lomachenko yusik amasov y'all are staying and fighting um which, you know, it's very inspiring. Like a lot of these guys have all the money in the world to go wherever they want and get away from this, but they defended their home country. What does that mean to the people to see um, a boxing heavyweight world champion, an Olympian, mixed martial artists, all these people they look up to stay and fight with them? How much does that boost uh, the morale of the citizens and the armies? No, it's, uh, I guess, from what, from the feedback I, I get in, in my social, uh, social medias, like Facebook and Instagram, the f- feedback is very positive and people are happy that they are not alone, that the public per- people, they stay with them. It's a good signal that the, and this gives them confidence in our victory. And I think that's our responsibility to stay with people and support them. Uh, Yeah, just to be with them is enough, actually. Yeah. Just standing with them and fighting is... Because we are part of those people, you know? We are one nation, and uh, we can't leave it. Like, if you leave, uh, you will be empty inside, you know? Because this is what your life consists of. Your people, your surrounding, environment, your country, your the, uh, ideology you have, the mentality you have, it's all part of you. And if you leave this, you will be empty. And I don't know how it's how it's possible. Like 
to start a new life in any other place. Well, you can, of course. It may, maybe it will be comfort. It may even be comfortable for you if you have resources. Yeah. You, but uh, but this stays with you for the rest of your life. You will be empty. You will be um, uh, how to say. Uh, you will be eating yourself from the inside. You know, you will regret probably. And so this is what I can let happen with me and with my country. So that's why I'm here. I, I help my people. I'm trying to be useful. And I am trying to show to the world as much as I can what's going on here to get the support that we need so much now. Yes. Yes, I agree. Now, how, how, um, how much has Zelensky actually stepped up to the plate? It's amazing what I've been seeing from the president of Russia. Um, it seems like just a few years ago, the United States was against him because of the president here, but now like the whole world's behind him. He's a man's man. He's in there on the front lines. That's, that's got to mean something to you. Yeah, definitely. Even during the elections, I didn't support him. It was me as and as many other people. We were skeptical about him because yeah. he is a comedian, you know. Yeah. By his profession, uh, but not, but but his, but not by his mind state, right? And what's inside him, and he proved this in the critical situation. He showed to the the whole world uh, what a big man. He is, and of course, like everyone respects him, and I'm sure for the next elections, <laughs> he'll be our president again <laughs> with probably 99% of the yeah, clean sweep, people. clean sweep. I don't know, I don't know if any of the United States presidents in the last 70 years would be doing the same thing he's doing. It's incredible. I, I can't, yeah, I luck, even, luck, <laughs> luckily, I could, you're uh, not in the same situation, but you don't know, you, you don't know what you are capable of. Uh, until the time comes, right? It's right. all about the circumstances, and well, we we are happy that we have such a president, and honestly, he changed that much in this in the last months. You you can't imagine totally another person. Like before, he was trying to play you know these politician games, but now everything he says how he looks how he behaves is totally different now he is a man really a man now his uh, speech is confident you know he knows what to say he he speaks from himself not from what like advisors tell him to tell to say so it's now it's quite different person and what we see we like uh, and we are ready to fight for him as well all right, so one more question before I let you go, man. I don't want to keep you too long. I know you're busy and you're probably tired. Um, no, I'm okay. I'm okay. Don't worry so what's your message of hope to not only Western people, but to the Ukrainians as well? <sighs> message, you know, it's not easy to tell the message to the world. Especially in war, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because people from different countries, different places, they see the situation from, in a different way. But of course, what is important is, uh, I can't say that like people's life is the highest value. Your people's life is the highest value, yeah, but not in general uh, human life. Uh, what is important is always to stay together and when critical situation comes, you be sure that there is somebody close to you that can, can I don't know, give your life, give his life for yours and be sure that you can do the same for, for the people around, All right? And of course, uh, May, may I translate one word? Yes, yes, that's fine. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Um, you know, it's... Um, 
when, when the situation is critical, it's not the time for hypocrisy. And this is what people should remember, even in the good times. And what we have now, we all the, uh, the people are very decisive and effective in their positions, in their actions. And I think the governments uh, of other countries should be same decisive and effective as their people are in their support of Ukraine. If they support, please support more actively and more effectively. That's what we need because time plays not on our side, not on, for our profit. And we have limited resources and we need to stop this as soon as possible. For our people, what can I say? <laughs> they know everything. They need to stand to the, to the last minute, to the last, I don't know, to the last sigh. Yeah. We stay together, we support each other. Everything going to be Ukraine. Everything going right. to be fine. The time will come and we will rebuild everything. We lost. And we will make it even better than we, it was before. The only regret is about the people that we cannot uh, get back to life. Right. Tough situation, man. It really is. And, you know, I pray for you guys. I pray for you guys every day. Um you know, and I'm, I keep up with it and I watch and I'm just in awe of what you guys are doing, what, what Ukraine as a country is doing, uniting together. And it's 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 incredible. It really is where if somebody that's listening or reading that wants to donate, where can they go donate to? Where's your auction being held? Um, where where's all that? Um, I, I guess the some. Uh, funds. I'm trying to raise up some funds uh, in my Instagram account, and there is a link in my profile. Okay. Uh, but I, uh, I sell my uh, Olympic medal at auction uh, on eBay, so everything everyone can find it. Um, I will send you the link. Maybe you need okay to post it somewhere. Yes, I will. Yeah, I will send you the link on eBay. And I'm I'm glad that this money is 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 quite enough to save somebody's life, and I hope till the the auction is is valid till eight eighth of April, and I hope uh, some bigger amount uh, will be fundraised. Like now, it's eleven thousand. Wow. hundred dollars yeah quite big for, for the medal i couldn't expect this but it's good it's yeah good. i'm happy people already not even already is that much to support our country and of course as a bonus they will have this exclusive medal it'll find there you its way back to you one day i promise you that the medal <laughs> we'll or see. or the we'll deed see. itself will find its way back it always has a way to do that my friend stanislav I appreciate you, man. Um, keep fighting. Thank you, Blaine. Thank and, you so much. Yeah.